When solving quadratic equations, we often encounter radical expressions that need to be simplified. We'll focus specifically on square root expressions. So in this video, we'll talk about how to simplify radicals and imaginary numbers. The square root of a number a is the number b such that b squared equals a. So think about that. The square root of 16 is a number that we have to square to get 16. That is 4 and negative 4, but we use a notation to denote just the positive square root. If we write this, the square root of 16 with a radical sign, that is simply 4. So this square root symbol denotes the positive root. That's also called the principal root. You know, the square root of 25 is 5 because 5 squared is 25. The square root of 121 is 11 because 11 squared is 121. Now those are rational numbers because when we simplify the square root we actually get an integer value. But what if we had to find the square root of 3? It does exist, it's just an irrational number. We would have to use our calculator and find that it's approximately 1.732. So when we square 1.732, we won't get exactly 3 because we rounded there, but it's very, very close to 3. Now, what about negative numbers inside the radical? For instance, if I had the square root of negative 4, Right, there's not a real number I can square to get negative 4 because if I square 2, I get positive 4. If I square negative 2, I get positive 4. I don't get a negative number when I square a positive or negative value. And so we have to introduce what's called the imaginary unit and it is denoted by the symbol i and it represents the square root of negative 1 and it has a property that i squared equals negative 1. So if we wanted to simplify the square root of negative 4, we need to think about the negative 4 is really 4 times negative 1. And then we take the square root of 4, and then the square root of negative 1. So the square root of 4 is 2. The square root of negative 1 is this definition, which represents a value i. Another one, for instance, if we wanted to find the square root of negative 49, that would be the square root of 49 times the square root of negative 1, which is really 7i. To simplify a radical means that we want to remove any perfect squares from the radicand. Now again, I'm focusing on square roots. If we wanted to simplify a cube root, which we can do that, you would remove any perfect cubes from the radicand. But we'll just simplify this to simply working with square roots. So whenever I'm looking at these values, I need to think about, is there a perfect square that goes into 20? And this is where you have to use your factoring knowledge. If I think about factoring the number 20, I could write 20 as 1 times 20, or 2 times 10, or 4 times 5. The only combination that has a perfect square is a 4 times 5. And so we will write this as the square root of 4 times 5. And then we'll apply the square root to each factor. That's the square root of 4 times the square root of 5, which is 2 on the square root of 5. If I'm looking at square root of 75, I want to think about what factors of 75 exist. I know 1 times 75, 2 doesn't go into it, 3 times 25, 5 and 15. The only pair that has a perfect square is a 3 and 25. So I'll rewrite that as 25 times 3 which is the square root of 25 
times the square root of 3, or 5 on the square root of 3. Now the square root of negative 4 we just did, but again it was 4 times negative 1. The square root of 4 times the square root of negative 1, which is 2i. Now the square root of negative 54, I've got to consider the negative part, but also the 54. I have to think about what are the factors of 54. And I know 1 times 54, 2 times 27, 3 and 18, 4 doesn't divide it, 5 doesn't, 6 does, 6 times 9. The only combination with a perfect square is a 6 and 9. So we will rewrite this as negative 9 times 6. So the square root of negative 9 times the square root of 6. The square root of 9 is 3. The square root of the negative 1 is i. And the square root of 6 we can't simplify any further.